Sometimes when you get desperate, things don't turn out so well, but other times it works out great. So what's the difference? Well, most often when you need to fix a part on your lawnmower, you can either try using epoxy, other times you might have to break out your welder. But some consumers, even the crafty ones, will never bother to try and fix it. But why wouldn't they even give it a try? I mean, it's already broken. How much worse can it make it? Turns out a lot worse. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this Yard Machines branded lawnmower, and the problem is that I just picked it up and I need to fix a few things on it, that way it'll be ready to be sold and at least have a good chance to make it through this next mowing season. Now, if you've been paying attention to this mower, it looks a bit strange, and on closer inspection, it would appear that someone was using a dishwashing sponge as a makeshift air filter. On a scale of 1 to 10, where 10 is the best score for creativity, I give it a 9 out of 10, but on execution, I give it a 2. Hey, but at least they tried. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower, but yours might be a little different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. Now, at the moment, we just need to inspect the mower and see what else we need to fix or even replace because, I hate to say it, when someone gives away a mower, it may not be in working condition. And to prove that, I've got a few videos where things go from good to very bad in a very short time, so be on the lookout for those videos. So far, from what all I can tell, it only needs either a new handlebar or we can try and bend this one back into shape. Luckily, they still make these and they're not all that expensive, which is great news. And aside from replacing the air filter and its cover, we might just make a very good profit on it. That is, of course, if the engine starts and runs without any issues, and if that is the case, this might be a very quick project. After pressing the bulb a few times and a single pull in the rope, it started right up and it sounds pretty good considering more than likely it's never been serviced in its entire life. So I'm very confident that, after a good cleaning and some work, we'll be able to make this mower go from junk to something that someone would pay money for. So here's the situation on this lawn mower. I don't recall or have any extra information about it, but it's pretty obvious that at some point the air filter cover was badly damaged and the part that broke off is the part that holds the cover to the base. But what's amazing is that the air filter is gone as well. So you have to wonder just how did this happen? And more importantly, why didn't they bother fixing it, but instead tried using a washing sponge and some wire? Now, I'm not bashing their choice to improvise a fix. However, I do have to question how effective it is, though. Nothing wrong with thinking outside of the box, but sometimes you've got to turn around and look what you've done and ask yourself, how does it look? And more importantly, does it do the job I need it to do? If they had done that for this mower, I think they would have considered doing it the preferred way, if not a different way. But is this the only creative fix I've seen on a mower? Not at all, and it only gets more creative after this. Now, in this part of the country, we don't see all that much rust, but it does happen to machines that see a lot of moisture, and that includes mowers, especially when you don't bother cleaning the underside of the mowing deck. And of course, that means you're going to start seeing small rust holes in it. What happens is that the owners will not understand why this always happens to their mowers and will always have some sort of industrial strength tape to try and cover up the holes, which does work at least for a short time until the adhesive starts to fail and they have the same issue again, but tape isn't the worst of it. Once we've gotten it as clean as we can, we'll start to put it back together. Now this cleaning is meant to do more than one thing. First, it'll allow us to see if there are any leaks coming from the engine. The other reason is that cleaning the engine will help it to keep cool since it doesn't have any water cooling, so it's going to hopefully last a lot longer as well. And of course, the best reason is because a clean mower is easier to sell. But before we close it up, I noticed that there are a lot of marks on the side of the flywheel, and it's a bit more than I like to see. Hopefully, it's not the coil making contact with it. So to help make sure it's not the coil, I'm going to loosen the bolts that hold it down and then regap it to the magnets on the flywheel using a standard business card. Now I do believe the air gap is supposed to be just a bit bigger than the thickness of a card, but the card is a lot easier to use. I'm sure there are other items that you can use other than a business card, and if I had to guess, I'd say that any card stock from a birthday or a greeting card would also work, so it's up to you which one you choose to use. After getting the business card out of the gap, turn the flywheel a couple of times just to make sure it's not hitting anything, and then we'll move on to something that looks very familiar to the story I just told you. As you can see, there seems to be some adhesive residue on this cover. It's as if the previous owner of this mower did try and use some sort of tape to try and keep the air filter in place, but it looks like it didn't work, and they resorted to using the wire instead. 
So it would seem that they took a very conventional approach to trying to fix it, but what's wrong with just fixing it the preferred way? I sure hope it wasn't a cost issue. Now the reason I say that is because you can go on a very large online retailer's website and search for the filter and cover as a combo, and you'll see that for less than $10, you could have had this fixed. If you thought that was bad, then you're going to love the zip tie bandits. They're the ones who will use zip ties to try and fix any and everything on a lawnmower and anything else they can get their little hands on. So what are some of the best zip tie fixes I've seen then? Before I answer that question, I do want to show you just how much of a hassle it is to change the cutting height for this mower. Now being a simple mower, there are no adjusters for the wheel positions, and as you can see, you have to unbolt the wheel from the deck and then put the bolt back into one of three openings. Now when the mower is on a table like this one is, it's not so bad to do, but when it's on the ground, it's a lot more challenging. So I just pick a height you can live with and leave it there, otherwise choose a different mower with wheel height adjusters. I'm also going to take this opportunity to clean the bolts of any dirt and grease and then apply a decent amount of lithium grease to them. Now these mowers weigh hardly anything, so why even bother lubricating the wheels then? Simple, I don't want the openings in the wheels to wear out, causing the wheels to be misaligned. What that means is that this mower will be easier to push and also keep in a straight line because the wheels will still be aligned the way they're supposed to. Now if they were misaligned, it would be the same issue with your car that had a bad alignment. You could end up with really bad tire wear and of course you might struggle to keep the mower in a straight line which might be important when you're mowing on a hill but on flat ground you might not even notice it. So back to questionable fixes, I've seen zip ties being used in place of a broken brake cable, tie downs for air filter covers, and even one used to keep an oil dipstick in place because they lost the bolt that holds it in place. Now let me be clear about this, I have no issues with using zip ties. In fact, if you look back at a few of my own videos, you'll see that I used them before but only as a temporary fix until I could get something a bit more permanent. I would not advise anyone to sell a mower with an extra zip tie where it shouldn't be. As you can see by how dirty the air filter base is, that the improvised air filter probably didn't work as well as they thought it was going to. In fact, it was so dirty that I had a hard time finding the heads of the fasteners so I could remove them. Before I move on, I need to clean this base of any extra dirt that I couldn't get to earlier, along with any dirt around the carb. Now you obviously don't need to do this, but since it's off the engine, this would be the best time to do it, and it only took a few minutes, not including drying time in the sun. Now I didn't have to wait for a cover to come in the mail, I had a spare one from a parts mower, but like I said, these covers are not very expensive, so if you need one of these, they're easy to find and won't break the bank, so please get one if you need one, just don't do what this person did. The worst part is that even my replacement cover was really dirty, so I had to clean it as well. Now I haven't looked yet, but I bet there are some crafty people out there who already have a program made for a 3D printer to make these. If you know about these programs, please let us know about them. Now, I've been waiting to get a 3D printer for some time now, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use it enough to offset the cost. They're not as expensive as they used to be, but there's still more money than I want to spend. So what's another creative fix that I've seen besides the use of duct tape and zip ties? Now, most people will never get to the level of doing metal work, but it's not out of the question. But the most common questionable fix I've seen has to do with the fuel system, which, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, is probably not the best place to do it. What I've seen are fuel lines being replaced with other lines that are not fuel safe. I'll sometimes find aquarium air hoses being used for two-stroke machines, and one time I found a really strange fuel line on a Briggs mower. I would tell you more about it, but the only way I can describe it is that it looked like a miniature garden hose. I know that's not what it was, but that's what it looked like to me. I'm in a bit of a pickle right now. I'm all out of these square shaped filters and the only one I have right now is in questionable shape. Yes, I could still use it at least for testing, but I am worried that parts of it might get sucked into the engine. So it would be best to order a package of five or more of these and put a new one in before I sell it. Now, if you're really cheap and happen to have some low density foam from either a pillow or some other piece of furniture, I don't see a real issue if you tried to cut a filter out of it. I know that sounds kind of redneck, but it's still better than what the previous owner tried to do to this mower. I guess it really boils down to putting some effort into your redneck repair. If you had a hot knife and cut a foam filter out of it so well that I couldn't tell it was made in your garage, then I think it's a good repair. Speaking of hack repairs, we finally come to the part of the project that I'm not comfortable with. Now you're probably wondering why I would say that, and the reason is this handle is really easy to bend, and the issue is that the metal is also really easy to break. The most likely area to break is the left side of the handle where the opening is for the Z-bend for the cable. There's not a lot of metal here in this area, so if we bend it too much, it will break. At least, if we do break it, it won't be expensive to replace. 
the other end of the handle where there's plenty of metal is not a real concern so I'm going to tackle this side first and then we'll finally bend the side that I'm worried about. Now this did happen to me on a project years ago which is why I'm worried to do it on this one. Just remember to go slow and try not to get too aggressive, otherwise you're going to end up with a two-piece handle. Now I don't recall if I tried to weld the metal back together on the last one I broke, but I'm only worried about this one right now, so I'm trying not to think about it. So I think I'm not going to try to go any further as far as bending it back, and I think this should be good enough. Now after looking at my handiwork, I'll then reinstall the handle back on the mower, reconnect the brake cable, and then try it out. Now as long as it works and I'm confident that it's not going to break, then I'm happy with the repair. Now after that, there's not much left to do except start the mower and make sure it still starts after having doused it with about 15 gallons of water to clean it. As you can see, it still starts and runs despite the massive amount of water I use to clean it. Just so long as you stay away from the muffler and the intake for the carb, it shouldn't have any real issues. Now I do need to touch up the paint on the handlebar and once I do, it should look even better. Now there's nothing wrong with some improvised repairs, just so long as it's safe. The one that was done on this one was safe, but the only thing that wasn't going to get hurt was the sponge. I still admired them for trying though. Now that this mower looks the way it's supposed to, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have any real issues selling it, but I'm almost certain that if I left it the way I found it and just done all the maintenance and cleaned it up, that I'd have a pretty tough time trying to sell it. Now, I've already made plenty of videos talking about how these simple little mowers are still in high demand, and I'm very certain that this one will be picked up pretty soon. So what would I do if someone wanted to counter with their own offer for this mower? That I wouldn't have an issue with, but hopefully they won't and just realize that the price I'm asking for it is still only a fraction of what this mower costs when brand new. So my question is, have you ever done a repair, and it doesn't matter if it was on a lawn mower or not, that would qualify as a very redneck repair, but it still worked great despite looking kind of weird? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.